Good morning folks. So I've been in the unit this morning and I've just finished off putting these bad boys on the tanks. But I found, hopefully it's in stock, a company that are selling some 1000 litre IBCs which will be perfect for me to use as a cold liquor tank because I don't need more than a thousand litres at the minute. The last one I had was 4,000 metres. Metres, litres. So we're going to go and see Stuart, get the van, see if they've got them in stock, pick one up. Shots. Right, this is the place. Morgan's Borrigans. They don't look brand new though, do they? Let's go and have a chat. Well, we managed to get a pump. One of those Clark stainless bodied pumps and a thousand litre IBC for 150 quid. So the pump was under a pound, which is standard, and the IBC was 49.99. Not bad going. Yeah, have a look. Not even see it. So uh, we'll drop them back off at the unit. I'm in silhouette. We've got a pump, new pumpy poo, and then we're going to lift the shutters and take off the IBC. Q time lapse. So there we have it, I'm back from Martin's Bargains and then back from Stu's to pick my car back up. Uh, I'm having a bit of a sketchy day today. I came in, uh, I didn't really open the camera up until gone 11 o'clock because I'm a bit unsure as to what I want to be doing. Uh, I kind of want to leak test the tanks but I can't because I don't have the right gaskets for the tri-clamps. Uh, so I thought oh, I'll have a look online and uh, see if there's any pumps available. Hence I found the IBC. So we've got the IBC which we can use as a cold liquor tank. Uh, and then I'm like, do I put the cooling uh, things on the back of the, you know, the cooling plates on the back of the fermenters? Uh, what do I do? I'm not sure. I also need to order some stuff from GC Supplies. I need to order some steel from ACS Metals in Lincoln. And all of these jobs are sort of getting in the way of me completing other jobs. Whereas I know I can just weld them, them plates on. I can weld them uh, cooling plates on without any problem. I might do that, you know, I might do that. And then order some steel. At least I know what I'm doing. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know. I think I'll have a coffee. And I might come back to my senses. Right, I know what I can do. Let's have a look at this stainless steel pump from Clark's. So, I've used these before. In fact, we had them on the cap washer at IVB. They're not really suitable for transferring any hot wort or anything of the such, but they're fine for transferring water up to 80 degrees. So they're good for the HLT transfer. They're fine for cold liquor water. Cold liquor water. They're fine for cold liquor transfer. So if you want a belt, water from your cold liquor tank, the IBC behind you, uh, through a plate chiller. They're golden for that. Now it says here they're designed to operate with clean water only at a maximum temperature of 35 degrees C. Well, I did use the other one up to 80 degrees with 80 degree caustic and it's still going, that one's still going. Uh, the one that we used acid on though, flunked. It failed. So let's get in the box, packaging as you'd expect, big old hefty pumperoo there, comes with carrying handle, rubber flex, not see that very often, but what you do get is nice big one inch inlets and outlets. Now I happen to know that this doesn't have stainless steel fittings on the inside. In fact, they're all, they're all plastic, 
but the stainless steel housing is a good move. The housing, this plastic case is obviously removable, but I'm gonna keep this one on because I took it off the last one and it made it really quite difficult to mount it anywhere. So we'll leave that on for this. I'm gonna use it as a mobile pump for now. So all I'm gonna do is stick an inlet on there, an outlet on there, and we'll change this from one inch outlet to half inch BSP and we'll stick some camelots on it, I think. To, uh, ready to get some pipes on and test it out. So I think I'll be stoning multiple birds today. The outlet for the IBC is conveniently uh, the same size as a one and a half inch RJT liner of which I have on there welded a half inch BSP socket to which I've attached a half inch lever valve and a half inch BSP cam lock male. Uh, therefore, we will pop on the little gasket that comes with it. And although there is already a tap on, on the IBC itself, I use that as an emergency shut off. I think if I'm constantly on and off with that, it'll begin to wear out the seals in there because they're not really designed with uh, much use in mind. So I'll screw this on, hopefully allowing these, both of these taps to function without fouling each other. Yeah, I think that'll work. So that's off and that's on, there we go. So what I'm gonna do, that's hand tight, is we'll keep this one open all the time and we'll fill her up, see if she holds, holds water, and then while I test the pump out, I'll put some caustic in here, and we'll send that into the pump, and then through the hose pipe, and back in, and we'll recirculate some caustic for an hour or two, and uh, give it a good clean out, and then we'll drain the lot, and uh, she should be clean. Now the guy ensures me that it's food grade, and they've been washed out already. They had about 100 of these in, on the site, Although I'd like to take his word for it, I'm still going to conduct my own cleaning regime before we put any potable water in there. So let's get the hose pipe and let's start to fill her up. It may take a while. I'll only put 50 litres or so in there, I think. Don't need much more than that. she's had a rinse out I decided to hold back with the caustic because I didn't want to waste it so what I can do is if I fill this up with caustic I can then transfer that and clean all six tanks in one hit with the same caustic solution it makes economical sense because caustic is expensive so I've now got an inlet fitted onto this uh, onto the boil kettle I've managed to bodge a gasket and put some old uh, three kilowatt single phase elements on there just to seal the holes up. So we've got two of them. You can see we've got the RJT blanks on all of these. Obviously that's not how they're gonna look at the end. But for leak test purposes, we just want to seal up all the holes. And on the bottom, we've got the outlet with again, another half inch ball valve to adapter, which will allow me to, of course, connect a hose and then finally connect the pump. So uh, I'll go and grab the pump and then we can connect this blue pipe to the pump outlet and the silicon pipe to the pump inlet, allowing me to take the liquid out of this tank and put it anywhere I like. So I'm gonna fill this bad boy up first. That is the plan. And after I've pumped water from all of these tanks into the others, then we'll pop it in the IBC and we'll save it for another day. 
Fingers crossed viewers, because we have water going in. So we're filled up past the top inlet or outlet, whatever you want to call it. But we will be going back to the welding bench. So just here, you should be able to see a couple of drips coming through that seam. So we must have a pinhole leak there. You can see good underneath now that it's coming through. I thought this might be the problem area where the weld was. And then strangely, around the other side, you see a puddle of water on the floor. So just here, near the leg, it seems to be seeping through about there, following the weld round and then down. So back onto the welding bench. I'll just draw red mark around where these leaks are and we'll get them patched up. Shouldn't be any problem. I didn't fill it all the way to the top because I got a little bit worried about these legs wobbling. So I've ordered the steel, I've bit the bullet. So we're gonna put one inch box section stainless to support those legs, stop them wobbling about. Right, I don't have much time now before I have to go and pick up the kids. So what I'm going to do is drain this tank into another one via the pump and hopefully I'll be putting it into a tank that I think will be leak free from the back, aka the mash tub. So we put a fitting on the front, we just have to connect up all this pipe work and I need a pipe for the pump. Here we go. There goes nothing, folks. You're watching this for the first time. Oh, it's that water dripping out. We appear to be fine. Yep, no leaks there. And she's belting in. There's a good jet on that. Right, right let's see if there's any leaks, so if you can hear me. see what we've got in here. So I'm assuming we've got approximately 400 litres. So as far as I'm concerned that was a successful test. We found the leaks on this tank which we wanted to do. Well we didn't but you know it was part of the test. And the mash tun doesn't leak whatsoever and the new pump pumps. That's pretty good, if you ask me. So what I'm going to do now is disconnect all of the outlets, remove everything, so this can drain down. I've got just enough time to do that before I go and pick up the kids. And then when I return, this should be dry, and I can get inside, and I can touch up the welds where those few leaks were. So, cue time lapse. <laughs> Oh, did it? Right, excuse the news. We have a pass. So we'll come back with the kids. I've had this in the shop. 
I've patched up the couple of seams that were leaking, transferred everything back in. It's leak proof. That's a winner. That's a winner. We're going to move on to FE1 now and give this a leak test. Just enjoying a tasty pint. Still's a good lad, isn't he? He thinks of me when I'm down here grafting away. So I've been inside the tank. I've managed to reflow where I think the problems are with the weld. I still need to go and inspect one of them actually, come to think of it. And then once I've done that, I'm going to stand her back up, I'm going to pump her full of water and then I'm going to go home. Gemma's upstairs with Dominic and Abby and they'll be itching for some tea and it's getting on for 6 o'clock. So I'd better really get this out ASAP and start to wrap the day up. Well we're just transferring, I'm finished work now. Find something to pass the time I guess. Hold on, right, let's get in the car and bugger off home. Do I need a shower? 